Good morning and welcome to the Great Plague of 2020. Yes, we're still on lockdown. So what I thought today we'll do a bit animal hybrid. This obviously is a zebra noceros. So without further ado, let's get going. So we're going to start with a blank sheet and we're going to bring in the first image which is the rhino. We're just simply going to drag it down and import it in. Let me get rid of the original. Now we'll just size this as best we can, which is to there. <coughs> and what we're going to do about the top bit here, we're going to get a rectangular selection tool. We're going to capture a little bit of the top, like so. And then we're going to go to Edit, Fill. And then on that fill, you have this contents, which has got foreground, background, and lots of things in, but it has content away. If you put it on content away and say OK, a bit Photoshop magic should fill that in for a Ah, there you go. And I'll deselect that and look, almost perfect. In fact, there's only that little bit in the corner that's a little bit problematic. So I'll just grab the clone tool and I'll select one over here somewhere and just run through it like that. There you go. Right. So we're going to put a zebra over the top of a rhinoceros, which is easier than you think it is. So let's go get the second image, which is, of course, the zebra. But we need to cut the zebra out. So I'm going to first give Photoshop a chance to do it. So I'm going to say select subject at the top here. And we want to see how well, yeah, I thought it wouldn't be too clever. The, the background's too late. So what we need to do is get a quick selection tool and try nudging some of these back in again. You change the tool from plus to negative by either hitting shift for plus or alt for negative. See, I'll, I'll just press Alt and it will go to a negative and it will shove the, the selection in a bit. But it's went too far, so I'll let go of that. Again, put your finger on shift and just nudge it back over again. We don't have to be too accurate. This is all right, it's all right. That needs a bit of a nudging there. Same here. Um, it's only a couple of places here in the leg and here below the neck. Is that going to cause a bother? And then it'd be easier to remove with the polygonal lasso tool. So we'll get the polygonal lasso tool and we'll put the finger on Alt to make it into a negative. And we'll just simply take that bit out. This is a bit more complicated, so I'll just zoom in a bit. As you see, you don't have to be that accurate at all. Um, and that's about it. So we'll put this on its own layer by pressing Ctrl G, G for Jasper. And it is there. If I turn that off, that's what we have. 
So now I'm going to pull this down out of the way, grab the way we want, and I'm going to drag it in and drop it. Now I want you to notice something here. This leg, the near leg of the zebra is the furthest back, but the near leg of the rhinoceros is the furthest forward. So we'll have to address that at some point. Um, but not at the minute. Oh, what I'll do is uh, I'll be pulling that over. So this leg here will go over there. So what I'll do, since I've got the polygonal tool selected, I'll just cut it, make a copy of this leg. And we'll control G of that. And it is there. And that's for later on when I need to fill in that leg. But in the meantime, we'll get rid of the original. We'll get that under the zebra one. And we'll start matching its size to the rhinoceros. Well, something like that's not too bad. Now what we need to do is actually shape it to the same shape as the rhinoceros. And I'm going to reduce the opacity on this one and see both. Right, yeah. And what we're going to use is puppet warp. So when we go to edit and then down to puppet warp, it breaks everything up in the triangles. Now, use pins and put a warp. So, you see, this part's okay, so I'll just put a pin there to hold it in position. Okay, that's all right up to there. This bit, we'll put a pin there, we're going to just pull that up now. Um, put that pin there. Just to get over the top of this bit, and I'll put it up in here and pull the head back down again. The pin about there, then go back and grab the spin. I should be able to pull it up. Stretch it. So basically all you're doing is pinning and dragging. Now you see this leg here. Just to line up with that one. Just to be a bit funner. So we'll drag that down there and we'll drag this bit up there. Right, you can twice it in the same place, it doesn't like that. I'm cutting too fast. And then remember, this one is really for this leg of the rhinoceros. So we're going to have to click on this leg. And drag it right across, like so, which means that this bit is going to have to be right here somewhere. And that's not looking too bad. I think we've got all the bits covered. 
Oh, this bit's we don't want. It's like near the leg, near the leg. So we'll call that okay. So, okay. Right, I'm going to put this part up to 100%. And I'm going to change the blending mode to the, the zebra. And the overlay. There you go. And you can see sort of how it's going to match up now. But we've got all these bits over the place which aren't matching up. So we'll go to right at the bottom here, add a layer mask. Now we we'll want a black brush. And this is a layer mask, so it works in black and white. Black conceals and white reveals. So if I just run the black brush around, like so, it'll just take away that edge where it's overlapping. You get rid of that leg. It's on the grass. This leg we don't want you that. We just have to reduce the size using the square brights. Get in there. Come back down for this. And uh, around his butt. Right, that's not bad. And if we then put the top one on the other leg, pick that up. It is the leg, and we're going to resize that. Something like that. And again, change the blending mode to overlay. Put a layer mask on. Grab the black brush, take the other bits that are overlaid the rhino. And there you go. Zebra Noceros. Hmm. Right, the only other thing that's bugging me about this is the colour of this grass. It's much, much too bright. So I'm going to go down to the bottom here, uh, create a new layer or adjustment layer, and I'm going to select hue and saturation. <coughs> now, since it's actually the grass that I want rid of, uh, there's something you should know about grass. Grass is not green. Oh, I know. No. Um, grass is actually yellow. So we'll go up to master here. And we'll go into yellow. And then I start reducing the saturation. There you go. I told you grass was yellow. And we can even darken it down a bit of entry as well. Yeah. There you go. That's not distracting from the Zebra Noceros. So we're in the the end stages now. So what we'll do is we'll boost contrast and we'll do that by using a gradient map. Make sure it's on black and white. Change the blending mode to soft light. And then reduce the opacity on what looks right.
actually about 30 inches sort of right I think so I'll put that on now yeah you see it's just whooped the contrast a bit and we'll also add another just won't be on there this time we'll do the levels and we'll just bring the black and the white in a touch and that will just give a full range and I think this particular one will probably benefit from having a vignette so add a new layer at the bottom here I'll create a layer on the top and I'm going to grab the black brush but this time I'm going to put it on 20% opacity we're going to use a fair size black brush something like this And what we're going to do is just run around the corners to vignette it. So I'm going to do that again, so we'll click again and run around again. There you go. Now you might think you've never done anything to that, but if I click this up, that's the difference. It just brings your eye into the subject. And that's it, completed. Animal hybrids, the core, combining two animals together. Um, a full written tutorial is available on the South Shields Digital Group website, along with the original images. And happy editing. Thanks for listening.